Welcome to week two of this course. The topic of this week will be lists and loops. And unit one will deal with the question what actually are, actually are lists in Python. Consider the following situation. You would like to collect all the names you are, would like to invite to a party. And you would like to do it with a Python program. Using the input function you already know from the last week, you could of course uh, get the names. However, how would you like to assign it to variables? Of course, you could name a variable name1, name2 and so on. But right at the beginning when you implement the program, you do not know how many people will participate. So that's a difficult question. Later on, you would like to sort these names alphabetically and maybe print all these names. And actually, that's not possible with the data types you are used to today. In this situation, a more complex data type would be helpful. A data type where you can enter unlimited number of elements. And such a data type is a list. So, lists can be used to store multiple elements or multiple items. How do lists look like? A list is created using square brackets, one at the beginning and one at the end of the list. And all the elements which are contained in the list are separated by commas. What you can see in the first cell here is first a list which contains some strings, the second one contains some float numbers and the third one some boolean values, true, false, false, true. And then the first list, the string list, is printed out. In the second cell you see a list which contains different data types in one list. You see these 1, 3, 5, all integers, followed by true, a boolean value. Later on, there's a float and two strings. And again, the list is printed out. It's showtime again. You remember? Now it's your turn. So, if you have not done so, download the notebook, start your Jupyter server, open the notebook and try to follow in the notebook what comes next? <clears throat> so again, here's the same motivation what lists are for. But now let's go a little bit closer into these um, cells, the programming and coding cells. You see we have a variable and like we have done in the first week, we can assign a value, in this case a list, using the equal sign. And actually, here is our list, starting with a squared bracket, followed by a few integers, separated by commas, and at the end, the list is closed again with a bracket. And here it's printed out. So you see, that's the value. Okay, I haven't set back the list. Let's start again. So, once again, here is this motivation. Why do we need lists? Because we do have lots of elements. Let's be a little bit closer looking on lists in these coding cells. Here you once again see a variable yeah? and you can assign, um, like we did in the last week using the equal sign, a value, in this case a list, to this variable. And this list is composed, as argued before, by a bracket followed by all the elements of the list which are separated by commas and at the end we have a bracket again. And then we can print out the list and actually you see the list is given out with brackets and commas between the elements. So no big surprise. And as you can see we can put all kind of data in here, here we have a list of strings, a list of loads and a list of boolean values. And we give out only the string list. However, we can have multiple data types in a list. So we can have a 1, 3, 5 all integers, a boolean value and so on and so on. And if it 
print it out. No surprise, that's what we are end ending up with. Maybe you remember from the first week that depending on the data type, you can use certain operations. And that's not only true for these primitive data types, that's also true for complex data types. In this case, our list. So what are typical operations which can be used? We have this plus operator or plus sign, but here we call it concatenation, which means two lists are simply put together to one list, one list follows each other. We have multiplication, but be careful, it's a multiplication of lists with an integer or an integer with a list, not two lists together. This doesn't work. And finally, we have the in operator. Yeah, and the in operator gives a Boolean value back, so either true or false, depending on if the element, in this case, three, is in the list one, two, three. But again, let's look at a concrete example. Here we have two lists. First list equals to 1, 2, 3. Second list equals to 1, 4, 5, 6. And we compose a new list out of this, which is equal to first list plus second list. And we print it. And later on we print three times first list. So let's see what is the result. Yeah, as you could expect one, two, three, four, five, six is one new list. So it's important to, fo um, to emphasize that we do not have two lists, one after each other, but we have one list containing all the elements of the former first and second list. And the same is true if we multiply first list with a three. We do not get three lists, we do get one list containing three times all the elements. Finally, let's execute, let's check this in um, operator. Here, have an, here we have a number, sorry, here we have a list of prime numbers, two, three, five, seven, and so on. And now we can check using the input function if a certain number is already contained in this list. Yeah, and you remember we have this if else um, control structure. So uh, if my number is in prime numbers, the, 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 the value of the operators is a Boolean value, so we can use it in this if statement. So if it is in, the first part will be printed. If it is not in, the second part will be printed. Yeah, the else statement. I run it. Now yeah, let's check if the 11 is in. Yeah, and no surprise, the list contains number 11. We can check it's in here. If we run it again and we check for the number 12, sorry, if you check for the number 12, you see the list does not contain the number 12 and you see between 11 and 13, the number 12 is missing. So what is the learning? What are the key takeaways from this unit? If we have multiple elements, if we have multiple data, and we do not know how many data we have, then primitive data types are not the correct one to handle it. Lists, however, can handle multiple elements. Lists can be initialized like primitive variables. You can simply use this assignment operator equal this equal sign to set an initial list to a variable. There are a few basic operations, like this concatenations, which work on lists. And using the in operator, you can check if a given element is contained in a list. 